Welcome to the Clarence Rockland Guide as we showcase local business owners and entrepreneurs. Our area, very lucky to be artistic with many local artists, including our next guest, Bernard Levesque. Welcome to the Clarence Rockland Guide. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, it's nice to be here. Now, is it true that your love and your passion for art started in the womb? How is that possible? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you could say that. Uh, my uh, mother was a, an artist also, and uh, while she was expecting me, I'm uh, number seven of nine kids, so uh, when she was expecting me, she had picked up uh, and was doing uh, oil painting, and uh, I figured the fumes or whatever. So uh, when I was born and later on in life, she had stopped because of the seven, nine kids. Uh, but a friend of hers had a painting that uh, got damaged, so she uh, she said, you know, bring it over and I'll, I'll touch it up. I still have my kit and all that. So uh, when she took out the kit, the fumes, the smell and all that is what grabbed my eyes. I was about maybe seven years old, eight years old by then. So uh, that really got to me and I said, uh, this is something I have to get into. So from there I took art classes, you know, regular schooling classes. but. Uh, none were available in those days for a young, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, classes were 18. So uh, my uh, mom went around and asked uh, a few uh, places, classes, and Sari de la Bay at Les Sœurs de la Sainte Famille in, uh, church, in Vanier on Church Street uh, decided to take me on after seeing my sketches, you know, I, what I was doing at that age. So uh, I was about uh, 13 or 14, and she took me on in the adults' classes, and uh, from there kept on going. So they took you on just based on the raw talent you the had raw at talent, 13? Yeah, for what I was uh, producing at that age, yeah. What so. were you producing back then at the age of 13? Bernard? Oh, fantasy worlds, uh, creative. Uh, I already had studied a lot of my, my own self in the mirror, the anatomy and all that, so I was sketching. Uh, anatomy, uh, people doing uh, crazy things on different worlds and you know the 14 year old sty type of style of uh, a kid and um, you know she, she brought me into those classes and uh, that, then I started uh, learning the rules, the roots of uh, how to uh, promote yourself, how to show yourself and we, there was the uh, Gloucester Guild then so I started uh, selling my paintings, I was 15, 16 years old so that's where uh, you know everything uh, kind of build, kept going from there. It's kind of interesting. You said you were selling your own paintings when you were a teenager. Most teenagers are working at fast food restaurants, but you were <laughs> selling your art at the age of 15. At the age of 15, uh, and I started uh, working. Uh, I was 14 because, my again, having a larger family and all that, uh, these classes cost money and whatever. So I started working, I was 14, grabbed my little salary and paid my own classes as I was going along uh, to, to, to learn more and get better and all this. So yeah, started uh, at a very young age. I was a janitor in a building and uh, went to work and did my classes and saw, uh, you know, I saw a dream for myself as, as an artist, as an adult. So. Get going, get going. Was was art a dream of your mother's, or, or was it more of a mm, hobby? More of their hobbies. Uh, my dad was more of uh, when I was started going to school. Uh, in, in 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 all this, he said, "You know, um, artist, you know, like literally the the typical, you know, you're not going to make a living out of this. It's a nice uh, hobby, you know, but uh, but my dream was set to to get into that in that way." So uh, I, he was saying, well, go into architecture or something like that. So uh, I went, decided to go into commercial art because it was more, in those days, there was no computers or whatever. Everything was hand-drawn and done by hand. Lettering was uh, done by hand. So I figured my dexterity and what I have already absorbed by myself, you know, uh, I kept it going in that way. So uh, I grew, grew in, that, in that sense. And then I went to uh, Algonquin College in uh, commercial art, and you know had always had a I wanted business. When I got to the interviews at Algonquin College, they were going, "Why don't you go to fine arts?" And you know, but we were in the wacky years of uh, the wacky tobacco, and uh, that was not my dream. I said, "No, I want to make money with my art. I want to make you know in my little mind and set ways of uh, drilling ahead." 
and I, it's a passion that I had been working on for a long time, so I'm not going to go. Uh, my idea of the art scene was not the idea that was out there at that point, so I decided commercial art was more of a practical way and more of a business way of going about it. And obviously it's paid off for you over uh, the years, over I would the years, say. Yeah. Well, I was a graphic designer for uh, many years. I worked at uh, Sheffield Graphics starting off as a, a paste-up artist. Kids would go, what's paste-up artist? Paste-up artist is uh, putting letters together in uh, paper format and create a book. And you, you, that's how the, the books were being made in those days. And they made a film and then they made the, the plates for the presses and that's how it developed. Today they go on the computer, poop, 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 it's all done. So a lot of it was hand done uh, back in the day. So uh, yeah, ex uh, Sheffield Graphics, then uh, Le Droit, uh, Novalis, Maison d'édition uh, Novalis. So I did uh, book work, uh, again, producing books and book covers and whatever. And um, from there, I was doing the gallery, uh, the windows in front, we were on uh, Rideau Street. Mm -hmm. So there was two nice windows and I proposed to my boss that these windows are not being used properly. Let's do something fantasious, something different that we could uh, use in the windows. So we did um, design of 3D stuff to present our books that we were selling. So the 3D kind of got to me, and I had them uh, back in high school, an honorable mention in uh, architecture. So I started doing plans and whatever. So uh, that's why there was a job opening in the hall at uh, Expo Graphics. And then I started doing exhibit designs. Same fashion, same thing. It's all art creative. But now what I was creating was becoming 3D live things. So that was kind of interesting. It was a lot of fun uh, doing that, that kind of work. and go out see in a client's mind, see what he has, what he wants to sell. He's selling skates for fantasy, des patates fantasy. Okay, and how do I sell that? So I get in his brain and get his ideas and create a kiosk, you know, something fantastic for them. And then the, the guys would build it where I was working at uh, Expo Graphics and uh, in, in a collapsible fashion that, that uh, kiosks all work, you know how it is. And uh, yeah, there was uh, really a, a lot of uh, good years, it was quite a few years there. At the time, was technology where it is no, now? Or no, was still it? doing everything by hand. Macintoshes were coming out very slowly in those days. Uh, the big uh, E-Mac, whatever mm -hmm. there. Uh, we had started doing some plans directly from that, but everything would break down. You start putting too much information. I think kids today wouldn't understand. Uh, you know, start doing your work and crash, it, you lose everything, didn't save enough time, and the old floppies and all that kind of stuff. And it was interesting work, frustrating, but interesting. And to find today uh, the way it's it moved and gone ahead and uh, it, the basis were all created when, when we started all that, yeah. Do you think that technology has either improved art or taken away from art? Well, in both. Uh, both, I find, improve quite a bit as far as the, uh, uh, the, the ease of creating because of where we're going. And I'm seeing now the, the glasses and you can be in your art and painting with brushes, whatever. I mean, the technology is uh, leagues of where it was back then. Uh, and to, for an artist, for a young creator to be at that stage and not have the blockage of, oh, the computer's going to crash if I do this or get that. So they were, it was setting up perimeters for us back then, what we could do and could not do and you can't do this way or lose a logo or lose something, you know. So uh, nowadays it's, it's going much faster. Now they have the tablets and all that. They're sketching directly on the tablets. Originally the tablets were all pixel or whatever. So it couldn't really work. So back then, but the artistic uh, part that I, that what I didn't like about the computers, it was taking away the the flow of the hand, the the, the scribble on the paper. It's like somebody who reads a lot said, "I like the smell of the paper." Mm -hmm. For the artist, you know, the smell of the paint and getting dirty and doing their stuff. That part of the creative is on paper. It's still there. So when you say the different, there, there's both things, you know. So. It, it's linking up. I'm finding, you know, with the new um, 
the pads that they have today, uh, they can describe which paper they want to use, what color, and how it's going to be reacting. Is it going to be reacting like a, a watercolor, or is it going to react like oil? Is it going to? But it's still they, not they the same. Them. It's still not the same because the final product is fake. It's not real. Whereas the brush strokes and the paper and the drawing, uh, that'll always be. You're creating uh, something. It's a dynamic uh, dimension. The other one is, it's in another dimension. So that's where I find that the creative is still there. Where is it going to end? I don't know. Creativity also based on inspiration. Where do you get your inspiration from? Oh, as far as, uh, because m my base right now is oil paintings and mm -hmm. uh, to create, so it's uh, to the uh, fashion, but I created in 3D because you walk into your, your paintings, whatever. Uh, my creation is all around me. Uh, I'm often you know, looking around, looking at a flower grow, looking at an ant rock, climb a rock, or, you know, all that kind of inspiration. Lights and darks, the day when he wakes up in the morning and goes to sleep at night, uh, the visuals that you see during a whole day. It, it, take the time and s that's what I like to tell people the stress the to people have today is take the time and stop look take it takes one minute and you've escaped the rush of it you know in one minute you can escape and be in another realm in another world if I can explain it like that uh, I'm not saying you know well, how can I say uh, in a couple of minutes by taking the time to stop yourself every day you find your creation, you find things that you can look at that are interesting, that inspire you to put on canvas. Uh, so a lot of the paintings I do is like a moment stolen in time, you know, when you look at a painting. And my paintings are not all the same either when I do a painting, it's anything. It's uh, nature scenes, uh, bowl of fruit, uh, portraits, uh, okay. One thing, because of my school and teaching, uh, the, the students want to know and learn about everything. I want to do my dog. I want to do my mom. Mm -hmm. I want yeah. to, you know. So uh, I became diverse in pretty much all styles and all the uh, way of attacking. But uh, when I say diverse in styles, when people look at my paintings, even though they're not all of the same object or the same thing, they recognize a brush stroke. And they say, well, that's about my Levite because it's, it's his way of handling the brush. That must so be that rewarding. I'm proud of. That's very rewarding to, to get something like that when they they look. And one, you know, an example, I, was, I had paintings at the Ottawa airport. They had created some little galleries when people are waiting for their planes and whatever, and they were coming out. I said, great idea. So it, if I, they asked me if I wanted to show my stuff. <coughs> so I put a few paintings up, and then I get that guy that comes into my studio, brought his daughter, and he said, had a great experience as I was coming out of a plane, coming from Hawaii, whatever, and I, I noticed these paintings on the wall, and uh, I said, I know this person. I know this, this painting. I've seen him before. And he said, got closer, then saw my name. Said, oh, it's Bernard. You know, so the fact that he could recognize from coming to the studio, dropping his daughter and seeing the, not, not the, um, the items, but the brush strokes, mm -hmm. you know, and seeing how I paint. When he saw the other paintings, going, oh, okay, yeah, that's a, so that's a velour. I, I find that's a, a plus. Let's talk in uh, the next two minutes that we have mm -hmm. together <laughs> about um, the lessons that you teach people in Clarence Rockland, including kids, inspiring them to escape into their own creativity. That's it. Well, uh, we'll, we'll start um, after the graphic part there at one point. I, w I moved to Rockland, started teaching uh, young, the young generation uh, art classes, drawing classes. And uh, at one point, the classes took over. Many, many business people say at one point, this hobby or whatever of mine took over, and I let go of the, the rest of the stuff. The uh, design aspect and that of uh, the display field was getting uh, over stressful. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, by sending stuff over to Europe and hoping that whole thing would stand. Anyway, so uh, the stress of that took over and uh, where I was uh, teaching classes here and I was becoming more of an enjoyment. And people were telling me, wow, we learned so much with you. And they told me, they tell me that I have such a, a knack for uh, teaching and making it valid and ha enjoying the pain instead of the, being uh, drilled into, you know, so uh, a lot of the students. So in, uh, my goodness, 1988, 
I uh, started the, the classes at uh, Centre Culturel Saint Famille, and after that uh, went to uh, did many years there. Um, but you were saying, uh, uh, repeat your question again. I think I diverged a bit of what you were asking me. Uh, the the classes themselves for the uh, the the people and how I teach. That's that's pretty much it. Um, people uh, come to the classes to escape. And that's the way I, I teach my classes. It's uh, it's an escape of your real life, your stress. So it's uh, uh, a way of uh, you, you said it earlier to me there. Uh, uh, Escaping, it's therapeutic. Yeah, therapeutic is the word I was looking for. Yeah, it's very therapeutic, and uh, people are learning how to create, and get uh, away and lost into their paintings and. Um, that's how, how they, they're learning and creating. So the, the studio's been doing this for uh, Studio Art Plus itself, uh, created in uh, 2000, okay? And we're in 220, so we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. Well, congratulations yeah. and thanks for joining us on the Clarence Rockland Guide. Okay, thank you very much.